Hello learners, welcome to NIOS. Today we will study lesson number 14. The title of lesson is sports training. We will study this lesson in two parts. So let us begin with the first part of the lesson number 14. Dear learners, before we start, let us know about the what are the objectives of this particular lesson. In this lesson, we will study the meaning and concept of a sports training. We will explain principles of a sports training. We will describe fitness and its component. At the last, we will also know about the aerobic and anaerobic exercises. So let us start with meaning of a sports training. Sports training is a process of systematic preparing of a sports person to perform well in a sports competition. In this sports person or a team get systematic training which is based on scientific principles. The goal of a sports training is to train a sports person or team to achieve their full potential and performance optimally in a particular competition. Sports training includes physiological conditioning, psychological training, skill training and training of game plan which is also known as strategy. Now we are going to learn about principles of sports training. Sports training principles are the guiding force for coaches or trainers to plan effectively their training schedule for sports persons or different teams. For an effective use of training principle, it should be taken into consideration for individualized training. The principles of sports training are the principle of balance says Basically, the principle of balance broadly focuses on right proportion of each and every performance determined factors such as physical capacities, psychological makeup and skill level. As we know, uh, sports performance is dependent on different factors and balance between them. The other principle is principle of individualization. As we know, every human being are different from each other. So this principle deals with the individual differences. Each training schedule should be designed considering the individual differences. Principle of overload means no athlete should be given loads beyond his or her abilities. See, uh, every human being have their potential and their load uh, taking capacity. So, every trainer or coaches should know that we should not stretch their limit. We have to give uh, the load which is they can tolerate. So, this principle says this. Now, uh, the principle of recovery. The uh, ratio of rest and recovery between exercise and time between workout must be taken care. See, if uh, we are not going to take appropriate amount of rest, so our performance will be affected. Now, principle of reversibility. Basically, uh, this principle state that when you stop walking out, you lose the effect of training. The science behind the reversibility principle is more complex. Moreover, on the plus side, it states that when you resume walking out, you begin to make gains again. While the reversibility principle is often perceived as a negative thing, exercise physiologists are discovering that it can be a positive thing as well. Principle of specificity. As we know, uh, there are different kinds of sports, Someone, uh, some is team sports, individual sports, combative sports. So, each sport demands a specific requirement and this principle guides regarding game specific requirement. Means, if you are going to train a football player, their requirement is totally different with an archer or shooter. So, we have to focus the specificity of the particular game or sports. Now, the principle of transfer. This principle says, basically this principle deals with how the workout performed during the training session can contribute to competitive performance. Now, principle of variation. For obtaining better results of sports training, variation in exercise, resting time and intensity should be considered. Now, we are going to uh, learn what is the aim of sports training. The aim of sports training is to train an individual or a team to achieve top form and perform better in a selected sports competition. Different factors are responsible for achieving top form of maximum efficiency. Sports training focuses on reaching top form 
or maximum efficiency. Learners, we have learned about the sports training, its principle and its aim. Now we are going to discuss physical fitness components. Physical fitness is basically the ability to perform day to day work without undue fatigue is termed as physical fitness. It encompasses a wide range of abilities so that one can carry out daily routine with ease and overcome the physical challenges during sports competitions. The first component of physical fitness is endurance. Basically, endurance is the ability to perform activity or any task with desired quantity and quality as well under condition of fatigue like uh, uh, continuous running for 15 minutes and above is best example of endurance. Endurance may be divided into cardiovascular endurance and muscular endurance. The other physical fitness component is strength. Strength is basically the ability to overcome or to act against resistance. It can be divided into three types. The first one is maximum strength, second one is explosive strength and third one is strength endurance. Now we learn what is maximum strength says. Basically maximum strength is the ability to overcome or to act against maximum resistance and the explosive strength it is a combination of strength and speed ability. It can be defined as the ability to overcome or to act against resistance with high speed. Strength endurance, it is the ability to overcome or to act against a resistance when we are in under condition of fatigue. Speed, the other component of physical fitness is speed. Basically, it is the ability to cover a distance or perform any action in minimum possible time. Sometimes it is says it is the quickness of movements of our limbs. Speed may be divided into five subcomponents which are reaction ability, movement speed, acceleration ability, locomotor ability and last speed endurance. First we know what reaction ability says. Basically it is the ability to react effectively and quickly on a signal. When someone given us a signal then we have how fast, how quickly we react on that signal that is reaction ability. Now movement speed, it is the ability to do single movement in a minimum possible time. Locomotion ability, it is the ability to maintain maximum speed of locomotion for maximum possible duration or distance. The last sub component of speed is speed endurance. It is the ability to do sports movement with high speed under condition of fatigue. The other component of uh, physical fitness is flexibility. Basically, uh, it is the ability of joints, means uh, flexibility is the ability of joints to move full range of motion. Flexibility can be divided in two types, one is active flexibility and second one is passive flexibility. Now coordinative abilities, ability to quickly and respectively doing group of movements with better quantity and effect is known as coordinative abilities. Uh, with the terms you can understand it is the coordination between different kind of abilities. So what different abilities are there? Uh, first one is orientation ability, then coupling ability, balancing ability, differentiation ability, rhythmic ability and last one is reaction ability. When we coordinate all these activities uh, that is coined a term that is coordinative abilities. In this video we have studied about the meaning, definition and principles of sports training along with physical fitness and its component. We will continue with the present topic in second part of this lesson. I hope you liked watching this video. Namaskar.